Okay, Amit. Now you mentioned earlier about getting good advice from Brian, etc. But your mum generally gives you the best advice, is what you told me. Uh, what's the best advice she's ever given you? Oh God. Um... I don't know, but it was probably something very profound. Uh, just oh, to your own, to your, to your own thine self be true. And I remember, I remember, Mam said that to me when I was a teenager. So I was probably lying about having been out the night before and having consumed large quantities of alcohol at the age of sixteen. And um, yeah, to to thine own self be true, and um, I do try and, and stick to that as best as I can. But also, I I'm an only child, and uh, without going down a, a rabbit hole of a very long story, I had a horrible horrible childhood. Um, but it's a strange thing to say when your follow-up comment is i'm blessed that i have an incredible mother um i think i'm very lucky that i'm an only child because i don't know how man would have handled things if it was two of us or three of us or god forbid four four of us that man was trying to raise um but my father was a a very powerful individual he was a, a principal of a primary school and uh, that was 15 to 20 kilometers away from from my home so it didn't make any sense for me to go there as a, as a student it would make far more sense for me to be going there as a, as a pupil to my local school but no 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 i had to go to to um his school because it wouldn't look right for him if his son wasn't going to to his school and uh, and of course as the son of the principal uh, i was bullied left right and center um but he um it was one day gary o'dowd and myself and i meet gary now on a regular basis and i think that gary still remembers the day that my father grabbed it was would have been the old um very heavy tables that we had in, in school and uh gary had made a sarcastic comment and i laughed and um this is sixth class, so we're what we're maybe twelve, maybe probably eleven, and uh, he he grabs the the bar underneath the table and throws the table on top of both of us, uh, and then makes us go and stand outside because it's our fault. Um, and and Liam Lawler actually said it to me uh, not so long ago. Uh, another former former um people of mine gary and Liam were, were always very nice to me they they were the ones who kind of looked out for me in a way if I, if I was the runt of the litter i was asthmatic i was not very good at sports um but they were always really sound and they were always really really good to me and they would have been a year ahead of me so i would have been in fifth class and they would have been in sixth class that's how it would have been and uh Liam had made some some comment some hilarious uh, schoolboy comment as uh, as my father Brian was was speaking, and he made him stand up, and um, Liam made another sarcastic comment that made us all burst out laughing. And my father's reaction was to pick up a chair, which was plastic but had four metal legs, and just fling it at him full force. And he just managed to duck. He said he could actually feel it go over him. He could feel the force of it go over his head. He just managed to duck in time. And I still remember it taking a chunk out of the wall. Um, and that was him. He was a, a very, an incredibly violent, volatile, vicious, um, aggressive, you know, nice street angel house devil. And, uh, remarkably he went from that to being special advisor to the minister for sports state youth and education and it was there where things really really kicked off um he was caught over the over the legal limit 
um, for for alcohol. He was five times over the limit. Got away with it. Didn't even go to court. Kept his license. Just quietly buried by the government. Um, and uh, he was being incredibly abusive towards my mother and I one one night. And uh, I locked myself in, in my room. And my mother had to knock the door to come in. And he'd he'd been physically violent with with her as well. And um, I was crying, just crying profusely. And Mam said, no more, no more. And it was 90s Ireland. And you don't separate in 90s Ireland. Like I'm 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 friends with people whose parents, you know, stay together, but they're not they're not in love and, and they're not even happy to be together. But that's how 90s Ireland was. And um, for my mother to stand up to to a man of his stature who would be seen by the community as, oh, you know, he's the principal of a, sc- of a school. So he's obviously, a, you know, an upstanding citizen. And, and then he's a, a special advisor to to a senior minister in government. Well, obviously, he's a, he's a fantastic, upstanding member of society. Uh, when in actual fact, he's a bastard of the highest order. And um, the only reason that I actually kept the Kennedy name is, is that I, I'm too young to appreciate my granddad, Jim, but I, I know stories of him. And my, my granddad was a, a very, very good and very kind man, but he was also a very smart man because I learned this in later life. He, um, he learned that he was going to pass away. And in whatever way he did it, he tied up the ha- his own house, the, you know, his, his home in, in, in Kilkenny City. He tied it up in legal ends that it could not be sold under any circumstances until his wife, my father's mother, uh, my granny, passed away. Because he knew that's what Brian would have done. And he would have. He would have done that. He was that kind of person. He, 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 was, a, uh, he was an alcoholic. He had an affair. He squandered money. I mean, the man rented a television for 20 years. Who, the, who, who rents a TV for 20 years? Um, and it was a 14-inch Mitsubishi as well. It wasn't even a good one. Um, he, he never, like I, I would go to my friend's house, like Donal and, and Bobo was in, and uh, their fathers, God rest them, um, Donal and Eamon would come out and, and play football with us. And this was completely alien to me because Brian never did that with me. Um, so uh, my, my mother is, is, a hero to me because she stood up to him and she stood up to him in, in the, in the strong, and he's, we talked about a bully off air, actually. Uh, I, I made a run for him when I was 13. So like he, he would have had a fair lot of strength on, on me. Uh, and I'm not exactly physically imposing as it is now. He hid behind a door. He was terrified that I was going to connect with him. And um, I mean, what would I have done? Like, it probably would have been like a, a an A4 paper blowing in the wind. But that's the kind of person he was. He was a he was just he was a bully. Um, and and my mother stood up to him. But the problem was that because he controlled the money, um, my mother needed legal aid. And I kid you not, this is an absolute fact, and it's such a fact that uh, a journalist in the Irish Times wants to write about it. And it's just a matter of whether or not I, I want all of those gritty details going out there. I mean, I'm, I'm pouring out enough as it is, but if to go into the real details and name, name certain politicians who are still in the game as well uh, as, as one be it. But um, he, he manipulated the legal aid. And, and I know that as well, because uh, the case just happened to come up. There was a, a circumstance that, that happened. And um, my mother is, is a very 
she's much cleverer with money than I am, and she's uh, she's got a great mind for for mathematics, which I do not. Um, my uncles don't either, by the way. And um, she has a, a fantastic filing system, and she kept the entire records of the the, the entire legal records. And um, through a series of circumstances, I was speaking to a friend about the fact that this case was going to be on and I had booked the day off work because I wasn't going to have my mother see my father for the first time in, in 20 years on her own. And um, it was a guard that I was talking to. It was a, a they wanted, on guard the Shia wanted me to host a, a road safety event, uh, which I ended up doing for the next three years afterwards as a kind of, I suppose, as a, as a thank you. And uh, he knew the backstory and he said, do you have a solicitor? And I, no, I, you know, we've spoken to the clerk, clerk of the court clerk. There's not one, not one, one isn't required. And he said, you're only going to get one shot at them. Take it. So uh, I got some advice and very kindly was given uh, pro bono. Um, one of the top solicitors in Cork, one of the top solicitors in the country. And um, he read over the files for about three days and he called me into his office with his team and he, he um, called me into the boardroom and he extended his hand and he said, on behalf of the Law Society of Ireland, I want to apologize to you and your mother profusely for what you went through. In my 25 years of family law, I have never, ever seen a case this bad. But your father is going to get his comeuppance now. And, um, and he did. And I got special permission to be in the courtroom and to see him eviscerated by a judge was quite a pleasant, pleasant sight. So um, my mother ended up working four jobs uh, because he wasn't paying what he, the maintenance that he was supposed to pay. And the maintenance that he was court ordered to pay was bloody pittance anyway. Um, and one of those was she had already been been running a, a bookmaking site, uh, bookmaking site. There were no bookmaking sites back then. A bookmaker's um, part time, but uh, she now had to go back and do that full time. And she was doing some other jobs as well, like parish secretary and, and different things like that. And first of all, I don't know where she got the strength to do all of those jobs to put the food on our, our plates. But secondly. Um, she then had to have the strength to go and face him in court with his smug smile, having the whole game rigged. And um, she did that. And uh, she, she ensured that I never wanted for anything. Um, we didn't have the best of everything, but I, I never wanted for, I was never hungry. Um, I, never, I never went to school without the right uniform. Um, you know, mom made sure that, that everything was done right. And she put me first every single time, like, you know, she sacrificed, mom wasn't going off on holidays. Mom wasn't going off. Mom do, didn't go to the pub. The, the thing that my mother loves to do is play bridge. And she's a brilliant bridge player. She's a fantastic bridge player. Uh, and right now, thankfully she can play it online. So in 2018, when, um, you come back from, from the UK and something tells you don't stay in Cork go home and um mom being so nice is asking me you know what was what was goodwood like and you're like you know, i was this and it was that and that chapman's impossible to work with and blah 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 and you're telling all the different stories and um and you know you obviously saying and how are you and um and she she tells me she has cancer and for 10 years, I had done a, I was very lucky to be part of a broadcast with 96FM called the, the 96FM Giving Living Radiothon. And uh, the first three years was for pediatrics, but the seven years after that was for cancer. And I pretty much know every statistic that there is in, in cancer. And, and breast cancer is the most common form of, of cancer in females. Testicular cancer, the most common form of cancer in, in men. And thank God, I just hugged her straight away and said, it's the most common form of cancer. It's, I think it's a 91% survival rate uh, and we'll beat it. 